My name is Elizabeth Castillo Salas. I teach kindergarten in Van Nuys, California, here at Valerio Elementary School. I've been part of the Literacy Academy for three years. The classes are formed um, based on the needs of each student. The structure of the academy is 90 minutes of early literacy. 30 minutes of those 90 minutes are based whole group, and the remaining 60 minutes are for small group instruction. When I look at a student's summary sheet, I'm looking for area of strength. We always want to start off with the positive, but we're also looking where the children is struggling. So we want to see if they are struggling with phonemic awareness, then that's an area that we have to work on and make sure that we pull those children together or cluster them and put them in a more cohesive group. Delani was with me at the beginning of this year. When I gave her the, um, the Dibbles assessment, she had zero uh, for all of her measures. Lend. If the children do not have those listening skills from the beginning, then it's really hard for them to hear sounds. So what I start off with, um, with any academy group that I have, is just becoming attentive listeners. So I play instruments, I play um, different um, games with them, I put beginning and ending instruments, so they have to tell me the instrument that they heard at the beginning, the instrument that they heard at the end, and then I throw in that third instrument in in the middle, so they have to give me three instruments that they hear. And every time I choose a different instrument, so the children would be able to tell me the different instruments in the or proper order for beginning, middle, and end. So we're gonna be looking for beginning, middle, and ending sound. So we're gonna use our instruments for that. That means you have to be a really good what? Listener, and we have to really listen carefully to hear those sounds, are you ready? If they're struggling with um, segmentation, then are they missing that medial sound? Are they only giving the last sound? Are they giving only the beginning sound? We can get really specific uh, information in those um, assessments to see exactly where is it that they're struggling. Open. What was the beginning sound, Cesar? If they got that, then we go ahead and we move to phoneme segmentation, which would be like um, segmenting the words um, and then moving on from there. The word is he. Let's do it together. E. Touch it. E. Blend it. Perfect. If they got the segmentation, then we can go ahead and move on to phonics. Delani, she was with me for two months and she moved to a different school. When she moved away, she wasn't really happy at that school, so she came back to our school and it was time to give her the, the moy the middle of the year assessment. So I went ahead and I gave her the middle of the year assessment and when I gave her the middle of the year assessment, I noticed that she was still struggling on FSF, which was still a zero. The targeted instruction from the beginning of the school year was um, FSF, which is first sound, for the group of students that I got. They all needed that. They were all between zero and 10 for FSF, for the first sound, and they had zero phoneme segmentation, which is PSF. So I throw in a little bit of rhyming, I throw um, syllables, I throw onset and rhymes, I throw in there, you know, just counting how many words are within a sentence. I do um, activities that have to do with first sound, you know, I do some segmentation, so a little bit of everything on the spectrum. Ickity bickity bumblebee, can you say this word with me? Computer. Computer. Can you clap it? Computer. Can you stomp it? Computer. Can you count it? Computer. How many syllables? Three. Very good. I can go ahead and target it, you know, and if the children are doing it incorrectly or you have those children that are very quiet and that you think are getting it and really they're not, you can definitely see that in a small group. So that's why it's something that I really enjoy. The word is moon. Mm. At the beginning, I did four individual activities that it would be fun and engaging for them. So I went ahead and I had Play-Doh at the beginning. I had, you know, just tracing the alphabet. I had um, magnetic letters. So what I did is just put the children in the four different stations and let them um, explore the different centers. I would put a timer and then they would move through the next 
station. And all I was doing was being the facilitator, making sure that they were doing it correctly, making sure that they were staying on task. I would help them and guide them the correct way. These were very simple activities. It wasn't a specific targeted skill. It was more like tracing the alphabet, um, matching capital with lowercase letters, um, just finding a few, um, using the Play-Doh, fishing for letters, just very basic. Once they've gotten that, then I went ahead and uh, during my small group instruction, I taught them one of the games that we, I wanted them to do independently. So then I was able to pull out a group while three of them were still working independently. Um, another activity that they do is a dice game and they, and they roll the dice and if it has that, um, it lands on that number. They read me all the words that are within that row of the dice and they love playing that. Progress monitoring is an assessment through our dibbles and it gives us an idea if my instruction is working to, to meet the needs that they have. So um, every two weeks I progress monitor them, making sure that they're getting the skill, if their phonemic awareness is getting stronger. And if it is, I go ahead and, and plan my next instruction for the next developmental skill that they need. If I see no growth, then I have to go back and see other ways that I can teach that skill so they could be successful on the next ones that are coming along. An activity like, let's say if the children are not getting first sound, okay, and I've tried fingers, you know, I tried counters, and there's different ways of, I've tried linking, um, those uh, linking, stretching. I would probably use the head and their, their whole body, so just a different, it could be something very minor that the children might get, so maybe we can try that. It could be a small adjustment, and they would totally, oh, something will click, hopefully. And the progress monitor will show me if they are getting it, if it's working. And if it's working, then I move on. When she started um, middle of the year, MOY, um, Deilani was still struggling with her phonological awareness skills. So she was well below basic on her phonemic awareness skills. The beauty about the academy was that we were able to target her instruction in her phonological awareness. Deilani has made tremendous progress. From zero FSF, she has the last progress monitoring that I did, I believe she had 56 on her FSF, and her phoneme segmentation was at zero at the middle of the year, and now I believe it's up to 30. Oh, so she's doing, re she's almost reaching ah. benchmarks, so I'm really, really happy with her progress. When Deilati started with me at the middle of the year, she was um, far below basic in her dibbles assessment, and now her phonological awareness is going to be very strong. Look at that. You see? You're getting so much better. Good girl.